bitch, big shit. Huh. It's a unique hustle, nigga, big shit. Big shit, big shit, big shit. Huh. Name another podcast like this. Who gonna bring it to the table? Boss talk. Who you? Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy ECEO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, outstanding official, Miss Jamaica Wait. Well, go on, you know, my dad? Hey, man, we got a guy here today, y'all. Uh, I think he's from he's from parts unknown. He's been in <laughs> Philadelphia. He's all over the place, man. He's you're in Atlanta now. I'm in Atlanta now. Yeah, residing. Munchie's in, in the building, aka Pablo's in the building. Y'all done seen him all over the internet. This guy, hey man, he's funny as hell, and he's here, man, in Texas. That is Dallas, man. Thank you for coming on the show. Hola, like, wait, what's up? Shout out to all my man, Carlos. Don't look out on this. We made it. <laughs> No, why, why? Come on, I think about munchies. I think about somebody who be smoking weed and you get the munchies afterwards. Where, mm-hmm. where, where munchies coming from? Everybody get the munchies. Like, you don't have to smoke to get the munchies. Like, you ever just chilling? Like, damn, you know what? I crave a donut. You know what? Chill yeah, yeah. Miles. Munchies is munchies. Munchies is more connected to weed because every time you smoke, you got to eat. Right. But just in general, people, some people just like naturally like to snack on stuff. Like, so you always munching? Uh, munchies, yes. <laughs> Yes, but the character, I never named the character until after I came back from getting poor. So mm. char- I spoke about the character on stage, but I never gave the name. I said my cousin, my cousin, my cousin, mm-hmm. but I never gave him a name. And then when I came back and I had to wait a month, a month and a half for my green card, mm-hmm. the wife was like, yo, if you can't film with nobody, just film with yourself and create characters. And out of nowhere, it's like, I put the beanie on, I was like, ooh, this dope, this character's dope. Cause I had the accent down, mm-hmm. I had the finger waves, like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, and the laughter to go with it. So she was like, "Damn, we came up with names." And I was like, "Man, you know, I'm about to get something to eat." And she was like, "Oh, you got the munchies?" I'm like, <laughs> "Munchies, that's it, munchies." And hey, boom. so let's me and my wife. Go. Let's yeah. get but to it. But you mentioned, okay, before I get into that, let's go back. So um, we like to go back to see where you from, mm. how you were raised, all of that sort of stuff. So mm-hmm. I know you said you were from Mexico. What part of Mexico are you from? Uh, TJ. Tijuana. Mm. Wow. That's like right by California. Right by the border. Yeah, like you know, I did not know that. We went to San Diego don't one year. Don't talk about it. Don't talk about that. Let me tell that you. Was very bad. No, it wasn't. Don't, don't lie. There were some guys from New York that was going across that thing and they was coming back and they was bragging about doing things that people should not. See, I wasn't going to go. Yeah, yeah, I wasn't going to. You gonna, just got deep, yeah. I wasn't going all the way in not talk there. about those but two guys we did from not, New York know. that went across that border and they was doing things that people should not be doing and telling me when they come back. But I didn't know that Tawana was that close. That's all I was saying. No speaking English. <laughs> he was saying all sorts of stuff. But um, that's that's dope. So how long? How old were you when you get when you came here? Three. Three. Wow. Three. Wow! And you went to school here. Did everything here. Mm-hmm. But you still have very good Spanish. Of course, it was like my parents and. You know what I'm saying? And uh, uh, my parents didn't allow me to speak Spanish in the house, so I would have to, I learned how to speak English watching Sesame Street. Mm. So that was my that was my homework at home when it was a kid. Holy days, yeah, yeah, the count. Yo, I ain't gonna lie to you, yo, the count. Yo, you know you got excited, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget me. how to get, how to get two cents. <laughs> Oh, silly. <laughs> Yo, what you putting this stuff in, dog? I got the boss talk kind of a purple drink. I don't know what nah, they're doing. Man, no, what but man? being young like that and, and being, you know, teaching yourself how to speak, you know, English and, mm-hmm. and just, just uh, being... Uh, here, you know, opportunity afford itself, but you bump, you did, you had run into some bumps in the mm-hmm. road a mm-hmm. little bit on. Uh, let's talk about that a little bit, right? Uh, mm-hmm. Just um, what happened? You know, that's like mm-hmm. <laughs> what bumps we talking about. But when you 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 know you was younger, you faced a little some issues. Yeah, yeah, I, just, I did some, you know, um, took matters into my own hand. Did some time, and it wasn't cool. Was it because of the, the area that you were? Because I always feel yeah, like, I, yeah. because of I'm a mom, and you know, with children, you think about, okay, why do kids get into trouble, especially if they have, you know, both mom and dad there, or we give them everything that they want, but they still go out here and end up doing things they shouldn't be doing? What is it? So it's two things, right? It's either your parents are good and don't have, uh, they don't, they don't, they don't put, you, they don't put you in enough activities to stay out of trouble, or the parents are really not good mm-hmm. and then you seeking love from the streets so it doesn't matter how you were raised it's just really the i, w- I was a product of my environment environment you get what i'm saying life. so me growing up being the only mexican guatemala because i'm guatemala my mother's guatemala mm. um 
in the I area. was raised in the all predominantly black neighborhood. Oh, okay. There it is. I knew he was gonna blame it on some. Yeah. some nah, <laughs> nah, 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 but this is just one thing, right? You see how a lot of people say black people, black people. I know a lot of a lot a lot of African Americans. I know a lot of good and a lot of bad, but just because the one bad, I don't say black people are this bad. No, the individual is this. The individual right. is that. So I can't place the, I can't place on a whole race oh, factor race. of mm-hmm. my eighty uh, uh, percent uh, interactions with a race because you right. can't. You right. can't. That's like saying that's like being ignorant. That's an ignorant person. You feel what I'm saying too. That's like saying all oh, our Mexicans are gangbangers and drug dealers. No, we're not. Mm-hmm. We're hard workers. Some might look like some. Just because I'm tatted up, don't mean I gangbang. Mm-hmm. Just I just made a dumb mistake. You feel what I'm saying to you? Everybody in my neighborhood, and I had a barber shop, and it was getting tattoos for free. So I was like, let me get a tat, and it went from <laughs> one to the next to the next. Because they're addictive. I heard. Yeah, yeah. But look, I got a whole bunch. But everything on my body is is not gang related. Like, right. You know what I'm saying? My kids, my uh, uh, ass. Say uh, one love Bob Marley smile now Carly because I'm an actor. But have people you know have people uh, like or have law enforcement ever targeted you? Like uh, of course, you know what I mean. Of course, and, 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 let, and let me let me let me let me talk about this because I did some that I'm being affected about it because I did a prank that involved some cops. All the stuff you see online. And I understand this is a very, very touchy subject, right. All right? And I'm not saying that African Americans are not getting targeted, but it's bigger than that. Mm-hmm. There's also Mexicans. There's also white. There's a lot of people that get minority killed. minorities in general. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Getting hit. What's being uh, what's being uh, 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 magnified more is African Americans because what they're doing is what they're trying to rattle that nest. Because that brings anger out of you. And what happens when you bring anger? Riots and this and that. Mm-hmm. And then guess what happens? Gentrification. Because y'all just damage the property and they come and take over. But they playing us. They playing us with our own emotions. You get what I'm saying mm-hmm. to you? So I have been, I've grew up in the same neighborhoods. I have been targeted. I have been slapped around. I have been kicked. I almost got planted with some stuff. I just... How Obey. do you not react when they treat you that way? When you see a gun, you just stay still. When they draw that gun, it's like, that's it. I don't got a gun. I can't shoot you. I can't get away with it. But then you see on social media where people filming and, yes, a gun is pulled out, but they still talking and arguing even when a drawn gun is pulled out. You got to understand those people never worked with their emotions. People were never taught to how to deal with situations like that. All we know is what? Anger. Yeah. All we know is frustrations. Yeah. We're tired. We're tired. We're tired of getting stepped on. We're tired of getting overlooked. We're tired of not receiving the blessings that everybody else receiving. So it's a lot of that. And then it's like, you might just catch me the wrong day. It might happen. I don't know. God forbid. You know what I'm saying? That it happens to me and they catch me in the wrong situation. I lose my cool and then boom, it's over. How much do you think that um, the internet help or hurt. worsen or hurt the effects of... Law you being brave against law enforcement because before some people might not have the courage to speak out but just because they have that phone videoing you're on camera you're on camera this whole situation like it, it, hurt, it hurts a lot but you know what's crazy everybody likes controversy everybody likes to see something so if anybody's fighting it automatically goes viral why oh look what happened look what happened look what happened look what happened and then it just it magnifies that that whole situation. To, it could have been a fight over any situation. Mm-hmm. Now because it's everywhere. Now your feelings is hurt. Now you want to come back and retaliate because now you've been embarrassed publicly. You get what I'm saying to you. So it's like people say instead of grabbing the phones, get in between. Like it was this one brother. I don't remember his name. He was Muslim. It was two kids fighting and their homies was filming. And he yeah. stopped the whole I seen thing. It. I seen it. Like man, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? Man, we brothers. Man, hug it out. Them kids ain't want to hug it out because they ain't want to feel like punks. But he made them hug it out. They became best friends. I wish more friends. people would do that. Yeah, that was a, that was a great thing, you know. But yeah. the, the deal is, man, like when you when you when you say what you say, it hurts, but it helps too, because a lot of times I remember being from the country when you don't have a phone, people come up dead, and there's no no rhyme or reason. The law mm-hmm. enforcement's never questioned. They tell you what you want to hear and somebody's life being taken and it's not done in an appropriate manner. When if they'd have had a phone, then they may have not been dead. I'm being real. Of course. So it's it's two sides yeah. of that coin. Mm-hmm. And, and and you'd never know just where it's gonna land, but 
the main thing is that you put God first for of me. Course, that's it, that's and it. if you do that, then everything else, uh, the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all its righteousness and all Amen. other things shall be added. So I agree with that. I mm -hmm. believe that. So I just try to focus on God, even though I know that you can get killed. Like when we got stopped, when I was coming from Louisiana or, or Mississippi, mm -hmm. coming from Atlanta that time, right after that guy got killed, you know, in front of his daughter, you know, mm -hmm. stuff like that. You, you be like, you be on guard because you don't know. Yeah. And you really what you're saying is like handle a phone um, very carefully, almost like what, what you do handling a gun if you're smart with it, you know, because you have those people who have guns and feel like I have a license. I can just wave it around. I can do whatever I want. It gives you power and gives you, you your braver in certain situations that you would have normally not been in if you didn't have that. It's the same thing with the phone. If you didn't have that camera to turn on, you would you might have sat down and yes sir, no sir, this that whatever. But just because you have that, you gonna act up, show out. You see what I mean? No, I get it. No, TYC. What what did they call it the, when you did the the time as a young? And how man? old were you when you got in trouble? What did they call it? Because here they call it TYC. I don't know. What a TY. It was, just, it was just juvenile. Oh, okay, no. so and and how old were you when yeah. you 13. got in trouble? Thirteen. Thirteen till nineteen. Wow. And how how much did it affect you being away from your family? A lot. It, it it was tough. It, it made me to somebody I didn't like. Was it gang gangs in there? Oh, I, I was listening. I was, they was coming at me from all sides. Gangs, regular people. Like it was like they said I sounded black. I didn't mm -hmm. look Mexican. I was because I'm like from Jersey. Like yo, what up, kid? So you didn't feel like you belong like, anywhere. Me and then the blacks looked at me like I was trying to be black. I'm like mm -hmm. I'm not trying to be nothing. I'm a product of where I'm from. Like I grew up listening to. Uh, 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 do it off from Lords of the Underground who's mm -hmm. a very good friend of mine you know what I'm saying so Dies Effects hey, Onyx right. you know what I'm saying Ace Town Knocking the Boots like I grew up to this mm -hmm. you see what I'm saying to you like that's all I knew I wasn't playing Mexican music you know what I'm but saying so, so what give me a story in there that happened something that happened that you will never forget it don't have to be bad or nothing but just something okay, that was okay. weird uh, you know uh, I'll never forget when it was this Mexican kid that came in that didn't speak English, was about to get deported, and they started picking on him. And I was only like a year in, and I was trying to stay out of trouble. And they tried to grab him up in the bathroom. And I just came in there and we just, I was like, leave him alone. And next thing you know, they jumped on me, boop, 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 mm -hmm. and he just stood there and watched. Oh, damn. Wow, so he didn't, he didn't even, wow. But he was scared. He was scared. He was scared. He thought he was going to stab him with killer. They just beat me up. They just boop, 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 boop. Wow. But, you but then you defending him. Like, why not jump into the, you know? He probably was he's scared. Like, <laughs> <laughs> they throwing them things. It's false. He's like, like, let them get the nuts. Let them get the nuts. Were you always a big kid? I was. I was or were you skinny? I didn't gain his weight till like 2004. Okay, so you were a skinny kid. Yeah, I was always like... I wasn't malnourished <laughs> like some people I know. You know <laughs> <laughs> but like I was like probably like oh like like a buck eighty, okay. six feet. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but that's good size. Yeah. Um, but when you think about just coming out after all that time, and you don't know, do you have family to come home to? How weird is it coming home? You see what I'm saying? You get out. You're 19. Mm -hmm. You don't have nothing. Mm -hmm. What do you do? So like my my parents just is like. It just, you know, it was, it, was, it was what it was. You know what I'm saying? They wasn't there for that. So I had to take that journey on by myself. They came and visited every now and then, but I took that journey on by myself. But it turned, I, I was like a happy kid. I was a happy kid. I was chilling. I was like, you know what I'm saying? Um, and it just, I turned into this person that now I'm mad dogging everybody. Now I'm mm. looking at everybody sideways. Now I feel like you scheming, you scheming. So it's like being in there ch trains you for things that you like. You know, like that sh that you're not even aware of on the outside. You like, I saw people just using that yap and turning these fools out. I was like, ooh, damn, this yeah. is out piece. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Dangerous. So you're like, you, oh, pay attention. You, know you learn a lot while you're oh, in there. Oh, my God. Man, listen, I, I learned how to make dice out of toilet paper. Hey, <laughs> our tattooing got a hard plastic. What? <laughs> So I, like, I just think that like coming home, it would be wild being that you've been locked up like that. My first day out. So, cause I was in boot camp. Correct. I was in boot camp. The first, the first two years I was in boot camp. So I remember the first day out, I'm laying in the bed. As a matter of fact, I'm laying on the couch. Mom walks in, turns the light on. 
as soon as you turn the light on, I sat up at attention with my hands on my knees like this, waiting to be told to get up and go take a shower. She's mm -hmm. like, what are you doing? I was institutionalized like crazy. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I was also scared when I was being released because I got real comfortable in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's real. It's I've like, heard people say no, that real. when they come out, they come out and they purposely get in trouble because they want to go back. Because nobody wants you. My parents was like, like, yo, you can't stay here because, you know, your sisters. And I was like, what the, what the fuck? Yeah. But what that does what that mean? Think, what the fuck no, think you have? Crazy. Like, what the fuck, what, where the fuck's your mind at? Right. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, did you get raped? No, I did not. This is not the fucking movies. Like, you know, people that get raped. <laughs> I know people not, feel that. But yeah. the only way you get raped in there, if you're doing some funny foul stuff or, or you rape somebody before you got in there. You get what I'm saying to you? So that really happens. You feel what I'm saying mm -hmm. to you? But... If you mind your business and you hold your ground and don't let nobody overstep you, mm -hmm. you gonna fight. I'm, you gonna fight. You gonna you gonna get down. You gonna get down. I'm just telling you. You gonna catch some and you gonna give some. So but as long as you hold it down, you good. Because this comedy that you do now, mm -hmm. you far? weren't doing comedy back then mm -mm, when you were. Mm -mm. In. Cause you but I was a class weren't... count as a kid though. I was I was a class count. I was I was always the center of attention. Cause you gotta remember where I grew up was. Either you learn how to take, tell a joke or you know, or you learn how to fight. So I had to okay. learn both. Explain to me how you first got into comedy. It was a dare. It was a dare in 2000, 2001, 2000. How old are you? How old were you at that time? Uh, 1920. Okay. So right when you got out. Right when I got out. That's what I'm saying. So when I got out, you know, I wasn't born here. So I didn't have a green card. So mm -hmm. what's the next best thing? Learn how to cut hair. Okay. So I'm cutting hair. A chin and daddy named Dexter taught me how to cut hair. He... I'm talking about this dude was a monster cutting hair. I'm the only Mexican in the Caribbean barbershop. Mm -hmm. You feel me? So I'm in there, and you know what it is when you're in a barbershop. You got to talk that talk mm -hmm. and get the jokes in, and we did that. And then a promoter I was cool with who had a missing leg comes in there one day, and he started joking with me because, you know, he got doing comedy shows. He's popping now. And he came at me, I'm like, bro, you don't want to do this. <laughs> and then everybody amped him up. But see, we got a thing called fishing. So they'll amp them up to come at you because they know like, oh, we got him, we got him. So now you got no excuse, rip him. And I ripped him. So he got so mad and he put up $200 and said, if you can come down to my comedy show and clown one of my comedians, you got it. I was like, And you I, did. Did you I didn't think him? I was going to do it. Yeah, I, I ended up going. But when I got there, it was 300 people. Wow. And did I you freeze up? I never done comedy show. For a second, I walked down. I was like, "What the fuck?" Is this? I, was like, what? I thought this was like gonna be like one of them little rap videos. You go into a room, it's like five people, and you telling jokes. Three hundred. Nah. nah, it was a lot of people. So I took like three shots of Hennessy. Like, loop, 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 loop. <laughs> they called me up, and we went at it. But I made sure before I went because I know there was we was gonna be cracking jokes. I went, I went and brought all brand new gear. I said, "I'm coming here fly. All you gonna have is little chunky jokes, but we straight. We got this." <laughs> and did you kill it? I killed it. Them people thought I was a real loud comedian. Wow. And that's what motivated you to be like, Keep going. man, this might be something I want to look into. The guy I, I was joking around with was named J.P. Justins at mm -hmm. the time, so oh, he was popping. And he looked at me and said, how long have you been doing comedy? I said, I ain't been. He was like, man, you like need tonight? to do this. <laughs> you need to do this because you connected with a black audience and you you Hispanic. Mm -hmm. That's dope. And they, they, they can relate to you. Mm -hmm. You need to, and ever since that, I just kept running. Who 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 encouraged you? Uh, who who when you look at it as a comic, and you like man, you know you you looked at him and encouraged you to you know go farther and keep going. What you mean as a, as a, as a as a like, as a, like known, a, a known comic? A known comic. Well, um, comedy was influenced in my house by uh, Chespirito. Okay, mm -hmm. like like I always wanted like as a kid I wanted to act because I could see he played multiple characters. That's where Munchies comes in and other oh. characters I have. But um, no George Lopez. Uh, more like Cheech and Chong. Cheech and Chong. Hey, I love Cheech and Chong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I was thinking you can't about. Be mad Cheech and Chong. Cheech and Chong. Nah, because I like them because they're movies. It, 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 to me, it didn't feel like a movie. It felt like I was actually with them. Yeah, yeah. So it wasn't forced comedy. It was more like, mm. hey, well, let's take this ride. So that's where Munchie comes that's in. That's what I was about to say. Yeah, that's, yeah. Who, that's who you remind me yeah, of. Yeah, so Munchie and Cheech and Chong is like that. Especially but with then, the thing now and then. George Lopez was further. Right. He was. Like, Cause he to me he's like the he's like the White middle, Mexican. Yeah, white Mexican. <laughs> but I'm I'm I love Eddie Murphy. Yeah. Love yeah. Raw, Delirious, mm -hmm. like you know what I'm saying, George Carlin, um, um, Bernie Mac. Top um, three comedians of all time. Dead Ooh! or alive. <laughs> Only three. Uh, Eddie Murphy. Eddie okay, Murphy. Number one, number two. Bernie. Number three. Fluffy. Hmm. 
Who is Fluffy? I never heard of Fluffy. Cable Iglesias, little chunky dude, watch him. He's okay. dope. He's dope. He's I dope. I know. I know. When I mean to tell you, and that's crazy because you don't even know who he is, but his marketing is not as big as it should be, mm -hmm. but he sells out arenas. Really? Like the Staples. Arenas. He sold out the Staples like twice, if I'm not mistaken. The first comedian to sell out the Dodger Stadium to do wow. stand up. Wow. So and he can go to Dubai, he can go to Anywhere Senegal, he can go to. Korea, and he'll wow. sell out. He's just that dope. He, he's he's commercial. He's Mexican. He's commercial, and he came out of LA. And he's a funny, funny comic and clean. Sorry, baby. Uh, whose show have you ever seen? And from start to end, you die laughing. Show Martin. That's my nigga, baby. Martin Martin Lawrence. <laughs> she know what's up, what's up, what's up. <laughs> Man, how do, how do you end up in Atlanta, man? I just like I like to I like I like to explore. I'm not scared of nothing because I'm from Jersey. Like I I was trying to get the comedians in Jersey to do what people in Atlanta were doing before people in Atlanta were doing it. I'm talking about before before Vine, before Instagram, mm -hmm. when YouTube was that when World Star was a was a was an app for mixtapes. It wasn't videos yet. Mm -hmm. I was like, bro, we doing stand. I was doing stand up with Hamburger. I was doing stand up with Mike Epps, Bill Bellamy, Roz G, Capone, Talent, wow. um, um, Freddie Ricks. Um, mm -hmm. I'm talking about some OGs. You feel what I'm saying? Cool Bubba Ice. Like I'm rocking with these cats, and he's like, yo, you you dope. You just got to keep going, but. Because I wasn't born here, I couldn't. I, I lost a lot of situations. Right. You know what I'm saying to you? At one point, we was about to sign um, Neo, and I couldn't sign contracts. It was part of a prank show. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So all these things came, and I never told people, and they just like, oh, this dude is not. Even with Jordan, even with Jordan, when Jordan made me was like, yo, you a dope comic? Like, come out to these shows. I'm like, all right, what that? They were an hour away from my house at nighttime. I can't drive with my, without a license. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. He thought. And this guy's not serious. Mm -hmm. I'm not. And I met him when he was about to go on tour with Country Wing. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? He was like, "Yo, you're really dope. I want to rock with you." And he thought that I was BSing. Mm -hmm. I'm glad that he came back into the life because when we connected, he was like, oh, "Yeah, you ain't really about comedy." Like, no, bro, I got deported. Damn, why you ain't saying that? Right. Well, I'm gonna tell you everybody that people gonna hate on you. So I never told people that. But you know, Jordan is one of the people that like said to me like, "You're dope." clean it up because I was doing hood comedy. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you can't do clean, you ain't right. a comedy. Like, you gotta be able to do both. I'm like, say less. But because I wasn't educated probably as far as exactly. social media, because I was doing clean and it wasn't going nowhere, I just wasn't seen yet. Mm -hmm. yeah. So don't lose hope. For wow. everybody out there doing don't. comedy, don't think that you gotta do hood to blow. No, you can do clean, mm -hmm. but you gotta be consistent. You gotta do it every day. And that's what I learned from Jordan. Jordan's like, I was doing three reels. He said, I need 10. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He popping already, though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he's calling me every day. Me and my wife is there behind him. He only did four. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I love about what you're I love saying? It. Yeah. I love the fact that cause when he was on here, he was talking about how Country Wayne checks up on him, making sure he's doing what he's doing. And now he's passing all of he's that down to you. you. He's of doing course. the same thing to you. Yeah. So I love that. Like Jordan, listen, this isn't, and, and, and it's not just Jordan. It's also my, my people's Robbie, like who 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 brought me on to to Instagram. You know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. he he got a million followers. He's popping. He ain't had to do that. He saw a hardworking Mexican that was like, yo, he's he, he working. Like even if I'm, I was supposed to shoot with him, they doing their own thing. I'm dropping five skits because I understood the name of the game. Is like you got to get to work. You feel me? So and then Jordan is like literally checking up on you. And we might we done had a little one or two discussions like, oh, I didn't see eye to eye with him or whatever. The next day, like nothing happened. Yo, what's up, bro? We about to go do. <laughs> That's how you know you got to cherish those relationships because. People out here are so sensitive. We might have one disagreement, no longer want to rock with you. Mm -hmm. You feel what I'm saying? It's bigger than that. You feel what I'm saying to you? And that's why we don't grow as a community. How How first, said, oh, uh, go ahead. Uh, we'll go, go ahead. How frustrating was it for you being illegal and trying to really get somewhere mm -hmm. in your comedy? That's tough, ain't it? Because I can imagine how frustrating I, that I'm going to tell you question. how it is. is. Imagine being pregnant for five years mm -hmm. and you can't give birth. <laughs> Yeah. Right. And you ready to that? I, yeah. I was worse than that mm -hmm. because you gotta understand. I got asked to come out to the Dominican Republic with a dope ass DJ and a dope ass radio host. Is a, I'm not gonna say, but it was a nice check. And this is in the, this is in like 2005. No, I'm sorry. This is in uh, 
uh, 20, uh, 2000 and I think it was 2006, if I'm mm-hmm. not mistaken, 2006, 2008, around there, around there, you know what I'm saying? So, but and I man, did it. I got to ask you a couple of questions. When I say these names, tell me what you think about them, what comes to mind, okay? Okay. Um, cheating ass Myron. Funny as hell. That's it? He funny. He mm-hmm. funny. He rank too damn much. He be trying to rank on me. He, he, he trying to rank on you? Because I say rank, right? Yeah, you all you said rank. I'm like, yeah, damn. She does Myron. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you got you to gotta remember, as comedians, like, we clown on each other. And if yeah. you can't take it, oh, I'll be you asked up. With it. I love it. Yeah, yeah. Um, Country Wayne, what do you think? What, his whole style. Country brand. Wayne, man, he, 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 he on his own level, man. Like, you know what I'm saying? You got to give it up to him. You feel me? Like, he he on another level, man. He on another level. On a level that where a lot of people want to be at. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying to you? And you got to respect him for the hard work and for the hustle and for the fact that he found it. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because he, he's an inspiration to people that are doing it because you, you want to be the people that are making 500000 Man, I want to make a million a month. Fuck 500000 I want to make a million. Mm-hmm. I want to make two million. Because there's a guy named Mr. Beast. Yeah. He's making hella bread. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And you know what he's doing? He's giving it away. Wow. Wow. Hey, he's like, yo, uh, today we dropping a million on somebody. And he's really giving it away. Wow. But that's what I'm saying. Social media is like Jordan was saying. You don't got to be about cracking jokes. You don't got to be about comedy. Something that you're doing, that you're giving, that you're loving, you're passionate. You could be passionate about putting this on, on a cup. Mm-hmm. If you're showing the love and you're teaching people how to do it, you're now something big. What about, I got one more name, Jordan Jackson. What What do you think about what Jordan you Jackson think? just need to eat because I think he got worms <laughs> or something. <laughs> <laughs> no, what do you think? What do you think when I say that? What That's what come to mind? Uh, nah, um, honestly. Honestly. Um, humble. Humble, loyal, um, hardworking, and a grinder. Like this man grind like nothing else. I, people think I do a lot, and I'm not nowhere near him because he's like mm. literally 20, 30 a day. He makes you want to step your game up. Yeah, so it's almost like a friendly competition. Like, you know what I'm saying? Oh, you did 10? Like, let me go get five more. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, and one day I'm going to look at him and I'm going to tell like, because you got to remember, he, he remembers I was doing three. Now I'm doing 10. Now I'm doing 15. I'm coming. Wow. Mm. I'm coming, Jordan. I'm coming for all that. I'm going to have my own bucket hat too, big dog. With the Munchie logo on it. Fat as hell. I don't care. So y'all work with so many different people. Like a lot, I see a lot of different girls, man. I've seen y'all with a lot of different girls doing a lot of different skits in a lot of different places. But yeah. before you get into that, how did you get into the skits? Because you were doing stand-up first. So how did you get into the skits? Before I saw anybody do skits, I was doing stand-up. Right. And I had a thing called Skits or Us. You can look it up. This is literally 2010 on YouTube. Skits or Us was something because every time I saw comedy, I, I, it's almost like you ever heard Biggie rap? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And I'm just asking because, you know, maybe you yeah, have I don't on, know. Man, you know what but it is. if you heard Biggie, matter of fact, no, no. Let, 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 let me remove Biggie because I'm going to tell you what made those cats who they are. Slick Rick. Yeah, man. Have you ever heard Slick Rick Once rap? Once upon a time, not long, long ago, ago, when, when people, people were jumping to live like so. Slow. Yeah. Come on, like, all you got to do is close your eyes and you can vision the whole thing. So yeah. When I was, is it a connoisseur? I think it's probably something like that. I don't know what it is, but it's literally sat there on stage and watching Gerald Kelly and all these people tell their jokes. I'm like, I envisioned the, the story, mm-hmm. which was to me, to them, like, yo, let's film this. I bought a camera, I didn't know what I was doing, but I said, let's film this. Like, we can film this scene and that scene and that scene, which is called Skits Are Us. Mm. Wow. You know what I'm saying to you? But they felt like, and I'm so not saying Gerald doing Kelly. It way I'm just saying, yeah. Like, but I was trying with Jersey. I was trying with my people in Jersey. And all they said, and I'm just, I'm not his name, made no names, but majority of the comedians was like, I don't want to put my jokes on internet because they're going to steal them. But bro, if you play your own jokes, can't nobody steal something you put. But they were trying to save it for TV. You know what I'm saying? And unfortunately, I was one of those people that believed in their material enough to put work behind it. Right. But then it took, you know, it took... 10, 9 years to come down to Atlanta not know nobody because I didn't know nobody. I didn't come to Atlanta saying, hey, my cousin. No. I bet it on me and I won. 
And when you moved to Atlanta, you moved with your family. My here. family and everything. Like, I came down. I came down here to open up a bar. I mean, I came down to Atlanta. Did your to open wife up. think you were crazy? My wife. My wife. When she met me, she saw. She saw a star. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Just like you. <laughs> when you met me, MC. But okay, before babe. her seeing it in me, I always had this feeling in myself, like. I was put on this earth to shine, and I'm going to shine my hardest. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying to you? So she saw something in me, and I was like, yo, I'm out. With no green card, no nothing. She mm -hmm. still believed in me. She's like, yo, I don't know what it is about you, but you're going to be some. But she didn't stick for that. She stuck for who I was, for humble, and, and, and I'm always making people laugh, and I'm not trying to make you laugh. It's just me. You know what I'm saying to you? So all of that in the mix. With my kids, we moved to Atlanta. And I was trying to get a barber shop, but I didn't have my barber license because it's not like Jersey where you can just cut hair, like whatever. So I ended up working for aircraft uh, airport and I started as a cleaner. And five years later, I became an aircraft engineer. So that's I was awesome. building airplanes for like NASA and stuff like wow. that. Wow. Yeah. Wow, that, that's heavy. So yeah. did you stop that full time and you're just doing comedy full time now? Because that's a well paying job you're talking about. It is. But uh, once COVID hit and then we had some issues at work because I have obstructive sleep apnea, like, I didn't want to be around COVID. COVID was my blessing and my curse. Okay. Because I took off on COVID. But right last year, October, I caught COVID pneumonia and I almost died. Whoa. Wow. Yeah. So, so you were hospitalized? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, I was For like two seconds long? away from ICU for like a week and a half. On oxygen, I couldn't breathe or nothing. How did that make you reevaluate your life? Be more there for my kids and my family, my wife and all that. So it's like, you know, now my kids are doing social media and now they done popped off. That's awesome. That's, yeah. that's love, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, thank you so much for coming on the show. How can people get a hold of you if they're looking for you? Um, Y'all can follow me on Instagram as much as El Jefe. Um, you can also follow me on Facebook, Life of Pablo, just like it is Life of Pablo. Um, uh, YouTube, uh, Munchies Ojefe, Instagram, Munchies.02. You know Thank you so, so much for coming on the show. We love you, bro. Thank you, man. I love y'all too, oh, man. man. Appreciate y'all. You always, you always welcome to come back. I, I know Jordan, you know, have you busy and you have your things going on in family, but, you know, we here. That's what's up. That's what's up. I love y'all, man. Check it, man. It's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101. What a boss is talking. Yes, sir. Yeah.